The number one question that we get on bikepacking trips is, what's the best kind of cook kit for a bikepacking setup? So in this video, I'm gonna run you through both my own personal cook kit and also a range of different options that you have in the market. Let's get you set up. And the first thing that I would recommend is that you go for a two pot setup. While minimal one pots certainly have their place in the market, in my experience, the freedom and flexibility that something like a good two pot system can bring is really, really worth the minimal weight and space penalty that you're gonna get. The next important consideration when it comes to pots is pot size. And I always think that it kind of depends whether you're a solo rider or you're riding as a couple. If you're a solo rider, I personally think something like a double boiler like this is a really good option. The bottom is a kind of 900 mil or sometimes a 600 mil pot and the top, which also doubles up as like a saucepan, you can fry on, you can heat sources from the water underneath. Usually a very good option. This is called a double boiler. But typically in terms of pot size, solo riders should be looking for something around a one litre pot combined with either a small frying pan or maybe a titanium cup that you can also cook on. And for couples, I would suggest getting a one litre and a 1.5 litre pot and look out for the ones that nest together. Tranja, Swedish brand, do a really, really good set. This one's actually in hard anodized. It's a really, really good pot. It's what I've been using for years. And you can fit a 1.5 and a one litre pot nested inside each other, no problems. The next important consideration when it comes to pots is about materials. And just like bikes, pots come in a range of different materials. From something like featherweight titanium, which is great for boiling water, but in my experience, not much else, to kind of hybrid pots like this one from Sea to Summit. This is a mixture of silicone and also um, aluminium. What's cool about this pot is that it pops up and becomes a much larger pot if you need it. You can also nest some stuff inside of this and then it pops down and the lid goes on and you can work with it like that. The downside to a kind of mixed pot like this is because of the silicone around the side, you can't put it straight into a fire, for instance, like you can a titanium pot. And you've got to be extra careful when it comes to a big flame. So something if you have a big flame on your gas stove is going to definitely damage that. My recommendation is one of two materials, either hard and anodized aluminium, or ceramic. The best ones in the market, I think, in terms of hard anodized, come from both Tranja and MSR. MSR also have a ceramic range, which is really good. The advantage of hard anodized is that it's a coating which is non-toxic, unlike Teflon, which will definitely kill you, and it distributes the heat really evenly throughout the pan. Next up is the wonderful world of stoves. And broadly speaking, when it comes to stove, you've got four major options. First up, you've got something like a gas canister stove. Um, these are probably the most popular in the market and in most countries are actually a really great option. The pros are they boil water really, really fast. They now, the good ones, have good simmer controls and um, they tend to be really light and super packable. That's why they're really popular. However, from a cons perspective, the gas cans, as you can see, sometimes can be pretty big. And in a lot of countries, these kind of gas canisters are not very popular. And so what a lot of people have to do is go to a major city and then stock up on maybe three, four, five of these canisters and bury them deep in their frame bags or whatever they need to do. For me, that makes it not a great bikepacking stove for international and multi-country slash continent crossing trips. But if you're doing more domestic trips closer to home, I'd say this is a really good option. Next up, you have something like this, which is a alcohol stove or sometimes known as a spirit burner. The great thing about a spirit burner is that 
Uh, it's a very simple construction. Usually they're made of just brass. They have these different types of openings and you, where you simply just pour the alcohol inside, set it alight with a match or a lighter and it burns really clean, really beautiful. This little top here is a little simmer ring where you open it up and you can have control over the flame, full flame or simmering. And from a cooking perspective, the thing that I really like about this and what's considered a, a huge pro for me is that out of all the stoves we're gonna talk about, I feel I have the most cooking control with this. I'm able to fry and get a good heat on stuff and char things. I'm also able to sort of simmer uh, soups and risottos and stuff that I need. So for me, uh, the alcohol stove is my stove of choice. However, in terms of cons and downsides, it's probably the least powerful stove in the whole lineup. So average times for boiling, say a liter of water is around six to eight minutes. So when you compare to a gas stove, which is probably two minutes, it's a decent consideration, something to bear in mind. But for long-term trips, alcohol stove is usually the best. Um, you can find alcohol all over the world. I found it from tiny villages in Peru all the way to cities in Berlin and all over the world. So um, I, this is my pick. Your other options are gonna be a twig burner or a biomass stove. Um, there's a bunch of these different options in the market, but the one that I like is from a small company called Vargo. Uh, they specialize in building titanium products. This one is called the Hexagon Stove, and it's something that I use on a daily basis. It packs really small, and then it opens up, basically corsetinas out into what it is now, and you can use it as is, opening up the front uh, latch here and just putting the twigs inside and burning a twigs like that. It also doubles up as a pot holder so your pot basically just sits on top and in my bikepacking kitchen I actually use it to house and provide as a windbreak for my alcohol stove. So that simply just sits inside like that. The alcohol is my primary burner and then not only is this my pot stand but also in an emergency if I can't find alcohol I'll use it as a twig burner. So one piece of kit that serves two or three different uh, purposes. Something very good. In terms of pros and cons, the pros to a twig burner is that uh, as long as you've got a forest or some wood around you, you're always going to have fuel. You don't have to carry anything with you. No alcohol, no gas stoves, no gas canisters. Um, you just use the forest around you. Uh, the downside, there's one major one, which is in some areas and some regions, fires are just simply not allowed. Um, and in very, very dry areas, you just shouldn't be burning in the forest anyway. Um, so bear that in mind and make sure that you check the regulations in the areas that you're riding. Secondly, undeniably, fire produces soot. And similar to the uh, universal stove, you will get soot on the bottom of your pans. And so that's a consideration. So when you're putting your pans back into your nice front bag or into your frame bag, you're probably gonna transfer some of that carbon, some of that soot into your bag. So for me, that's why I always use a twig burner as a backup. And finally, the last one in our setup is the universal fuel stove. Now, I don't have one of them here to show you, um, because I don't have one in my kit. And to be honest, I don't really like using them. Um, but as the name suggests, the universal fuel stove basically burns a variety of different fuels from petrol and diesel to ethanol and jet fuel. So for that reason, they're favored a lot by long distance, multi-country, multi-continent tourers. And as a pro, the usual reason is that you can always find fuel. And in that case, it's a really, really good stove to have. But for me, that's probably where the pros stop because on the con side, they're usually quite big and bulky. Um, and in my experience, cooking on petrol is actually quite a dirty experience. I mean, it's as dirty as cooking on fire, sometimes even worse. When, when I first started, I had an MSR Whisper Light, a great stove, lots of heat, but unfortunately it 
had all this carbon, all this black carbon that would come up and go all over my pots, all over my clothes, all over my bags. And for that reason, I just gave up on it and, and I, I don't really like using them anymore. Some people like Ali Denham cycling about, he still uses his and loves it. And he's found all these different ways to uh, figure out how to get it simmering right. So check him out if you haven't already. But for me, a universal stove is, uh, is out the question. And my favorite is either an alcohol mixed in with a gas canister for more domestic trips. That's stoves. Next up in creating your bikepacking kitchen are the accessories. And the first most important thing is a sharp knife. Now, there's a lot of good knives in the market. Um, I've used a few. The classic Open L, number eight or a number nine, depending on your hand size, is a surefire choice. It's cheap, it's inexpensive, sharp, and if you lose it, which you probably will, um, it's not a big deal. Now, I use this knife. It's from a brand called Civivi. It's called the Elementium. I love it. It's uh, hardened steel, super sharp, very, very easy to use and super packable. But when it comes to knife choices, look for something with hardened steel and something in your budget. Honestly, a cheap knife will do the job. Other things to consider is utensils. Now, utensils come in a whole bunch of different options. You've got stuff like long neck or long handle aluminium sporks and spoons like these from Sea to Summit. These are a good option. I've actually just been using this one in Peru. Um, great if you have something like a long pot, something like the bot, for instance. Um, a regular size spork just won't get all the goodness at the bottom. So something with a long handle is really, really good. I also uh, would recommend this if, like me, you keep your spork out of your cook kit. So this actually lives on my bike during the day in my stem bag, just slotted down one of the sides. And because it's got a nice long neck, it never sort of falls in and gets, in, um, and gets lost. So if you're prone to losing stuff, long necks are good for you. Um, but generally on trips, I would recommend something like this, which is just a simple titanium spork. Um, it has both the fork head and the spoon head um, and just really good for grub. Something like this, something like one of these, can't really go wrong. Other important accessories that you should probably bear in mind is I really, really like using these small silicone spatulas. Now, as you can see, this one has seen some shit. Um, it's like burnt and charred and snapped and gross. Um, so sorry about that. But also um, the silicone actually is an amazing choice for just generally stirring. It's not gonna scratch your pans. And also it's amazing at cleaning bits of dried on um, sauces and bits of pasta. So what I usually do is as I'm stirring, I'll serve out what I'm gonna eat or if I'm eating from the pan. And then before letting it dry, I'll just wipe it down with my spatula and just eat straight off the spatula. It's fantastic. Get yourself a spatula, full size if you want, baby size like this. This came out of a Christmas cracker. So maybe wait till next Christmas. Other ones that you should think about is if you're gonna be using a pot similar to mine, which doesn't have any handles, you're gonna need a, a pot holder. So this is a, just a very simple one, again from Vargo. Um, and basically what it does, it just comes onto the pot, you close it up and it enables you to move stuff around. Um, really, really important, really good. This one from Vargo is good. The one from Tranja also is really good. But I'll be honest, this is about 11 grams lighter and I'm a weight weenie. I can't help it. Um, that's really important. Other cool things, um, storing oil. You can do that in a variety of different ways. You could use something like this, which is from a company called Human Gear. Uh, and these are called Stacks Pots. These basically all stack together and you can do it in there. So that could be an option. Um, you have these Nalgene pots. These are fantastic and feature heavily in the cookbook. They're uh, screw lid, which means you can put all manner of things in here from chickpeas and sauces to oils. Um, these are like the gold standard of accessories and they come in a range of sizes. Um, how I do it is through this little pot here. This is called a goo tube. 
Um, and effectively, I just chuck my oil in it and that's how we go. So that's a fantastic way. It holds about 125 milliliters of oil. So I usually just top it up when I get to hostels or warm showers hosts along the way. Um, people don't usually mind if you steal a little bit of olive oil. Um, that's a great accessory to have. Other things that I have that you might not want to have is I have a mini grater. Um, I tend to cook quite a lot of curries, both here in Thailand and also on trips. Indian curries, Southeast Asian curries are a big thing for me. And a lot of that comes to like grating ginger, grating garlic. Um, and I prefer to do that. It's a lot quicker if you just use a grater um, rather than having to chop everything with a tiny knife. So for me, it's invaluable. For you, it might not be, and that's okay. And last but not least, um, when it comes to storing spices, you have a bunch of different options. Again, you've seen this already, but these little Nalgene one ounce um, screw top lids is how I usually store all of my spices. In here, there are some cumin seeds right now. Um, very simple. If you can't find these or you don't want to invest in these and you're an analog film photographer, consider using 35 millimeter film cans. So this is very, very simple. It's literally just what your film comes in. And after you've got it devved and scanned, use these. I tend to use them for things that are kind of um, pretty universal and don't really matter if they explode or fall out. Now, unlike the Nalgene's, the screw top here will not let you down. This is simply just a flip top and it can lead to explosions. So just be mindful of what you put in here. If a bit of salt ends up in the bottom of your frame bag, not a big deal. But if loads of cumin seeds or maybe you've put like matcha powder or something in here, if that ends up in the bottom of your frame bag, it's going to be a real pain in the ass to, to wash out. So just bear that in mind when you're choosing between the two. Um, and other things that you can use if you don't have a silicon uh, spatula, consider using something like a pot scrape. This is from GSI, really, really cool. One side is really hard, so great for those like stuck on hard bits that you can't get out. And this side is sort of bendy silicon, similar to a spatula. And this is really good for just wiping it down, cleaning it all off, because in the back country, unless you're sleeping next to a water source like river or a waterfall in Thailand, um, water is a scarce commodity. So anything that you can do to kind of get a pan clean, so you only have to use a little bit of water and maybe a wet wipe or a tissue to wipe it down with is gonna be your best friend. This is great, not entirely necessary if you do use a spatula. And the last thing you need to complete your perfect bite packing kitchen are recipes. And for that, head to thebikepackingcookbook.com. We've got everything to get you started. Happy eating.